We have heard uh, this morning that water is uh, the most important factor in uh, future life and development. Uh, I would say that there is one more uh, environmental element that is more important than, uh, than water. Uh, I would recall the 3-3 the three, 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 uh, rule that uh, you can live uh, without food for three weeks, you can live uh, uh, without water for three days, and you can live without air for three minutes. So obviously air is very important, and I will talk about uh, climate change and uh, related uh, consequences uh, with special focus uh, on the water issues. Uh, I don't want to go into details of climate change because uh, already we have heard a lot uh, about it and, and I think that many people think that uh, they know a lot about climate change. I think very, very few really know, but uh, many things that they, they know, it's uh, like uh, many other issues in the world. But uh, obviously, uh, the atmosphere is one of the, uh, of the environmental compartments that are most affected by anthropogenic, by human activities. And here is just um, a list of uh, an overview of uh, the major con con constituents of the atmosphere. And uh, the second column shows the percentage uh, change of, uh, of the content, of the amount since uh, the Industrial Revolution. And here we see in very interesting uh, features. For example, we see that we already changed the amount of oxygen in the air. Uh, no matter how, how, how large the oxygen reservoir is, we already managed to cut uh, the level of oxygen by a, a few uh, hundreds of a percent, but uh, it's uh, measurable. And we increased, it's well known that we increased a lot of trace gases by significant uh, factor. Carbon dioxide more than 40% or methane more than 200%. Uh, and we also managed to, to cut back ozone levels by 4%, which was stable for 300 million years before uh, the last few decades. So, Within two decades, we managed to, to deteriorate the ozone layer. Fortunately, this is an environmental success story, so it's now uh, getting uh, better. And we hope that by the end of the century, it will be restored to its uh, natural state. But uh, these changes are enormous. So we, if we consider carbon dioxide, uh, a level which was stable for hundreds of thousands of years uh, before, we increased it by 40%. It's an enormous change, but the, the sad uh, thing is that it is not visible. We cannot see carbon dioxide in the atmosphere. We cannot see that it is more now than it was uh, in the past. If the same uh, magnitude, uh, if, if a change uh, of, the, of the same magnitude happens in, for example, uh, in, in our environment, for example, the Mount Everest will rise uh, to by 40% in height, then because of human activity, then we would be uh, stunned. And we would recognize certainly that this environmental change happened within a few hundred years or within a few decades. Uh, due to our activity. But we, we can't see the atmosphere, we can't see the air. We don't even know that air uh, is uh, one of uh, our most valuable resources. Uh, so we didn't recognize these changes and uh, neither the consequences. We already saw that there, there, are, there were large changes in, uh, in uh, climate in the past, and we know uh, reasonably well the last uh, 800,000 uh, years, where over most of the times, uh, the temperature was much uh, lower than uh, today. So we are, this exploded uh, 
part uh, shows the Holocene. We already uh, heard of, of these uh, last uh, 11,000 years, which uh, made human civilization possible. But this is a, a kind of uh, very beneficial, very pleasant period of the Pleistocene, of this last uh, two million years. So it's a valuable one. We should uh, preserve it. And with, it's well known that we already change and changing uh, the composition of the atmosphere and increasing carbon dioxide. This was not always uh, known in the past. And in, even uh, 50 years ago, when these measurements started, this gentleman was almost, uh, almost uh, imprisoned because he wanted to measure carbon dioxide. And he was told that, why measure carbon dioxide? Why spend money on uh, making this measurement? This is a waste of money because carbon dioxide is well regulated by the biosphere and it's a permanent constant com uh, component of the air and it, there is no uh, indication that there is, that human can do anything with, with the carbon dioxide. And when it started the measurement, when the measurement was started, then the, the result uh, was not believed in the, in the first four or five years. They were just uh, so that the, the instruments were wrong, the, were wrongly calibrated. And uh, it took five years to, to believe that it's not a measurement error. It's uh, actually, actually uh, concentration is very rapidly changing. A concentration which was stable over thousands, hundreds of thousands of years. So we know that, uh, or, or most of us know that uh, climate change is on, as it was in the past also, but the, the space, the, the pace of the, or the rate of the climate change is much uh, larger now than it was in the past, when there were these uh, last uh, variations, seemingly last variations, between ice ages and uh, warmer periods, it was 40 times slower than the changes of today. So now we are in a much uh, higher rate of change than in, in the past. And this, this poses a lot of problems to biology because biology is not uh, uh, able to adapt uh, uh, the, the rate, to the rate that, uh, at which uh, at which our environment is changing. So when, if we lived uh, in, uh, if, if we had lived in, in these uh, periods, and some of our predecessors uh, actually did, we wouldn't uh, observe, we wouldn't uh, notice uh, climate change in our life because it was so slow that it was not observable by an individual. No, we, or you, or any of us can observe changes from from uh, their uh, from your uh, uh, childhood to your uh, uh, up to up to now. You can detect these changes by yourself, which is unprecedented in the history of uh, of uh, the Earth or modern times. Probably dinosaurs also recognize some changes of weather when the, uh, the meteorite uh, collided the world, but it was a catastrophic event. That was one of the uh, exceptions that uh, a human, any creature can observe a change of that uh, magnitude. Okay, so we know that we, we affect climate ma in many ways, and it's, it's a complex system. So it's not, it, it shouldn't be uh, simplified to this carbon dioxide issue. It's not the only component of the change, the in, uh, increasing level of carbon dioxide. It's much more complex than that. There are many factors, many effects, sometimes uh, counteracting uh, effects, which we uh, have to take into account. So it's a very complex system. It's not like uh, turning the knob uh, in, the, uh, in the room uh, thermostat. But some people, uh, and, and uh, nowadays it seems uh, that it's, uh, it went, uh, it come to the level of the politics, and uh, it is uh, a political poll 
from, uh, uh, from uh, the United States, California, five years ago. And the questions were, these stupid questions, uh, there is no global warming uh, or humans are, there is warming but humans are absolutely innocent or humans have some responsibility or don't know which is a and there are politi uh, political parties uh, fans which uh, vote differently and uh, most republicans think that the world is not warming which is a point but the world doesn't care <laughs> what uh, republicans uh, or the of the or the president uh, uh, thinks of uh, of warming. Warming is a nature of phenomenon. It, it it occurs. It doesn't care what we think of it. But there are a lot of effort in uh, disproving that uh, any effect of uh, anthropogenic activities is is taken from a, a film, a movie, which uh, has the title of Great Global Warming Swindle that it is, is a, it is a hoax, and uh, volcanoes emitting carbon dioxide, and uh, we don't uh, matter. What we do doesn't matter. So the carbon dioxide is not properly indicated here, but uh, just, uh, it's not true. Volcanoes emit just a few tens of uh, millions tons of carbon dioxide a year, which is less than 1% of the amount that anthropogenic activities do. It was 55 million years ago when volcano emitted an amount of carbon dioxide that is comparable to the amount that we are emitting today. So that in the past 55 million years, there were no emission, no major emission of uh, volcanoes. I mean carbon dioxide emission. Uh, I will talk briefly ab about uh, uh, the consequences uh, related to water. And we already heard many of these consequences. One, uh, or two is, uh, I think these are interrelated uh, floods and uh, drought. Uh, and these are not uh, necessarily caused by the global state of the atmosphere or these global changes that uh, many people think, sometimes these, uh, these uh, changes are caused by region, regional uh, activities. And the most uh, uh, prominent example is the South Asian regi uh, re uh, re region, the Indian continent, which uh, pollutes the atmosphere to such an extent that it simply reduced, blocks the radiation of the sun, and it reduces the sun uh, intensity by 10% in the whole region, which means that they totally rearrange the conditions of uh, the meteorological conditions in the region. And for example, they can affect the monsoon regimes, large weather patterns like monsoon, and totally uh, turn uh, it upside down and, and, and introduce large changes to this uh, system in the region. And this is not because of the steadily growing uh, concentration of carbon dioxide in general in the atmosphere. This is local regional effect of uh, radiation imbalance. Here is uh, how by which uh, uh, intensity reduc reduction is observed over this large region. So it is like, it's literally like turning down the intensity of the sun by 10%. It's a large amount. Like in, uh, in a dimming uh, the light in the room in modern lightning system, we dim the, the sun in, in over months, over large regions of the Earth, and it has imminent consequences in the region regarding water availability, since the monsoon uh, is the primary source of uh, fresh water in the area. So the, we just move the monsoon inadvertently by turning uh, 
the knob of uh, the intensity of the sun. And the other issue that uh, is related to water is related to an other uh, form of water, is ice. And this uh, is most observable in the north, in the far north, in the Arctic, where we can observe a very rapid uh, decrease in uh, sea ice, in summer sea ice, which affects large regions over there. And here is uh, the observations that shows that uh, summer sea ice is very rapidly getting lost over a period of a few decades. There are measurements, unfortunately, there are uh, available measurements, satellite measurement only from the 80s, actually uh, from 79 on, so we can monitor the changes since this uh, 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 date. But we already saw about 40% reduction in summer rise over the Arctic. And we also saw a reduction of the thickness of the ice, the sea ice, which went down from six meters in the 70s, in the 80s, to one and a half meter by now. So the area is shrinking and the thickness is uh, decreasing. So the ice, the volume of ice is very rapidly disappearing uh, within a few decades, two or three decades. So it's a very rapid process. Ice is a very uh, robust system which has very low tendency to change because it's it's quite uh, resistant, but it cannot resist the changes that are happening in the Arctic region. It's not only the temperature of the air, it's, it has many factors, including physical factors of oceans, uh, storm intensities, and, and other factors. But the result is that we are witnessing a very rapid decrease of uh, summer rise over the Arctic. That it has some beneficial, I don't know whether it is beneficial, but, uh, but probably um, economically uh, good uh, consequences, for example, the uh, opening of the north and east or uh, northwest passages for, for uh, marine uh, transport and exploiting uh, 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 oil or gas from the far north. Maybe it's not so beneficial, but at least uh, it opens some, uh, and it has also contributed to negative, uh, to positive feedback, so uh, reinforcing uh, component, for example, the, uh, the, uh, the sowing of the permafrost releases gases like methane, which increases increase uh, greenhouse effect and contribute to warming. So the, the latest news is uh, this. This year, the, sun, the ice is uh, going down uh, along the blue line. And uh, this dotted line is, uh, shows the two, uh, 2012 uh, case, which was the lowest on record so far. So we are, and this was the, uh, median of the last 30 years. So we are well below, so we are continuing decreasing the volume of ice in the Arctic very rapidly. There were in the news uh, in this, sum this summer that there are problems with Antarctica as well, where there was a large ice shelf from Larsen Sea uh, being uh, destabilized and went into the ocean. It's, uh, it's, I think it's the si size of main state uh, in, from the United States, uh, just uh, went into the sea. And uh, this is not an unusual effect. It can be a natural <coughs> effect since uh, this iceberg uh, 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 normally uh, uh, go into the sea uh, at uh, some frequency, but it's it's, uh, I think, uh, at least uh, alarming that uh, these, uh, in the past 20 years, there were three 
of uh, this event, which was not observed in the previous more than 100 years. So it's, it seems that it is not uh, only nature that does uh, this, but there, are, there is some human uh, influence on that. And uh, one of the, uh, in the developed world, and including Europe, uh, one of the, uh, or clearly the most uh, uh, influential uh, natural uh, disaster is heat waves. <coughs> It, it uh, cannot be observed because it's not uh, on uh, the media uh, headlines. But uh, for example, in 2003, there was a two week period in Europe which uh, caused uh, the death, uh, the, uh, the premature death of 70,000 people only in Europe. And this is because uh, the Temperatures were about about five degrees higher than uh, the people used to, which means that they were not prepared for tolerating such uh, high temperatures. And th at that time, there were no measures against, no adaptation against heat waves. By now, we have we have more severe heat waves than than these since then, many of them, but much less. Uh, fatalities because of the adaptation of the society. So that's, uh, that calls uh, uh, our attention to the need of uh, adaptation because we cannot prevent these weather patterns occurring but we can, uh, from occurring, but we can adapt ourselves to the changing conditions, at least uh, to some extent. And let's see what, uh, what are the tendencies in, in uh, heat waves in uh, Hungary. And here we see that heat waves, which is defined as uh, medium temperature above 27. We had experienced this summer quite a few of these days. It's not very pleasant for most of us. It means that uh, uh, the mean temperature is over 27 degrees which includes uh, early morning temperature, 6, uh, noon temperature, and uh, late evening temperature. And these three is over 27, which is quite uh, intolerable for the human being. And in the past, there were some occurrences. So our, our grandfathers may told us, may, may tell us that uh, there were uh, very hot weather uh, sometimes. It, they, they were, but very rare. Once in one decade. There were hot weather for two, five, a few days, and then for a decade there were nothing. Here is the frequency. This is observation. This is not prediction for the future. This is observation, meteorological observation, away from the town, so no urban heat effect. These are clear uh, meteorological observations with the same instrumentation. Temperature was measured, still measured with the same instrumentation, which is reliable. And here we see the, in the past, we experienced only a few. In the 90s, we have 35 heat days, heat waves, the last decade of the 20th century. In the first decade of the, of the 21st century, we have 50, more than 50 of these days. And now we have 75 and we haven't ended the decade yet. We have two more years. So we may have near 100 of these days. And what is uh, the message of these, uh, of these changes? Are these natural changes? Are the rate of these changes uh, natural and can be explained by natural phenomenon? Probably not. These are much uh, more rapid changes than uh, we can tolerate, the bi uh, biosphere can tolerate, uh, and it, it gives us hard time to adapt <coughs> to. Uh, I would uh, show you uh, just last, uh, last uh, slide, and it is not a scientific one. It's just an indication of what are the reasons and uh, what are the, the, the connection between the 
the cause-effect uh, relationship, but it's not natural. So please don't take it as a, as a, as a, as a scientific uh, proof of any change. It's just an indication. And this, this, is, uh, this shows the amount of uh, summer sea ice uh, based on observations as changing from the uh, late 70s to up to now. These are observations. And here is the, the number of heat wave days at mid latitudes. So that the, the, the slide that I just showed uh, before this uh, averaged over, over uh, uh, 10 years. So this is basically what we can expect based on our experience from the previous 10 years. So we now experience about, expect about 10 days each year of such a high temperature, these heat waves. In the past, in the 90s or in the 70s, we didn't expect just a very little, less than one day each, each uh, year. But in the meantime, there was massive loss of ice in the northern latitude. This Arctic ice, summer ice, behaves as an air conditioner from the northern hemisphere. So there is a large body of ice which cools the north hemisphere. It's not a direct relationship. It's not like in the refrigerator. But still, it has a large uh, effect on the weather patterns of the mid-latitude. Uh, mid it's like putting a large chunk of ice around the, in, into the corner, a very large body. We, we would feel better, uh, even if there is 40 degrees outside, if there were a huge ice in the corner of this room. But just suppose that this large chunk of ice melts away and there is no ice in the corner, 40 degrees outside, we feel much less better than with this ice. So this is basically what is happening now. There is a large change in our vicinity, relative vicinity in the North Hemisphere, a very rapid loss of, very rapid indeed, loss of massive ice volume and as a consequence, an increase in temperature at uh, down to mid, mid latitudes, for example, in Hungary. And it, these changes are extremely rapid. It's within my life. I was born in the 60s. When I was a child, there were no heat waves, no heat alarm, anything. There were sometimes there were a few days, but it was tolerable. Now, for my children, it's every day phenomenon in summer to experience intolerably high temperatures for a prolonged period of time, and these are not independent. So, effect of uh, re uh, uh, deteriorating uh, air conditioning in the north and increase in temperature at uh, lower latitudes. So that's what we expect. And if we, this is also not scientific to put some trend uh, lines on these uh, few uh, data, but it just shows that if it continues, which is likely, then we can expect, uh, well, very uh, unfavorable weather conditions for, for our uh, place. And the last is just uh, to show that uh, the zoo of the, of the god is, is large. This is a habit in America to buy some uh, electric, uh, electronic device uh, from China to put into a diesel uh, car and occasionally by turning uh, this device on they can emit a large of black uh, smoke uh, into the air. And this is, uh, it, it has Facebook uh, profile, uh, I mean, uh, Facebook uh, communities and, and uh, in, in the States. And it, it has to be done near electric vehicles, Tesla. So if, 
if they go to drive uh, near uh, Tesla, they just switch it on and they, they just uh, uh, emit a lot of uh, smoke uh, onto, onto the vehicle or, or the passengers or, or, the, or the pedestrians. So just, uh, just for fun. And this is, uh, this is how we uh, behave and how we intentionally uh, deteriorate our uh, environment. And this has uh, several tens of thousands uh, followers and uh, those who practice this uh, every day in the state. So that's uh, just show that we are deteriorating the atmosphere without doing these sort of things. We do it every day, even ourselves, by a lot of our activities. But uh, we are not aware of that. But we would be aware of the consequences, or already aware of the consequences, but we will definitely be aware in the near future. And we don't have to wait until the end of the century, until major changes occur, but likely we will have in our uh, environment uh, changes that are related to the changing atmosphere. So thank you for your attention.